Hello and welcome to episode 2 of How to Write a Bot with Microsoft Bot Framework. If you remember in the last episode we installed a template for Visual Studio and we installed the bot emulator to help us uh, examine the bot and use it and test it. So let's go straight into that now. So let's open the Visual Studio. And again if you're unfamiliar with Visual Studio what will happen now is we'll get the home page and we won't have to remember where the bot was, it should just be in the recent, so here we are there. We can just click on that and that will load it up. And again from the episode, the previous episode, we know that this is a website. So when we select this and we press the little run button here, it's going to spin up IS Express and we'll see that come up here, there it goes. And here's our little sample bot at 3978, that's the port number. And then if we go to the emulator, so just type in bot here, and find the bot framework emulator. And because we opened it, in, we previously opened it, it should also be in the recent, so here we are here, the main bot. So we can just open that, give the game away there. And it's running, and when we test it, what we should see, and we've already seen, is a breakpoint being hit. So I'm going to type hello in here, press and send the message. And now the emulator is going to send that message into our code. And I've created what's called a breakpoint here. So you click in this little margin here, you can add breakpoints. And that has stopped the bot running, and it has allowed us to look at what's going on here, so we can see we can inspect it and see the type is message. And then the messages can come through and we can see the bot responding here with the words hello world. And when we use the emulator, we can also see that from the emulator side. So if we select on the message that I sent, we can see all this information here about what was sent over, including the important bit, the text that says hello. But also the fact that the type was a message, which we saw in the breakpoint. And then the message that got sent back, hello world, we can select that and we can see that message come in. Uh, and so this is an important concept here that all that's really happening is these chunks of messages have been sent to and from the bot. So this one being from the bot, here is the from, from the bot. And this one here, the from is from the user, i.e. me. So I've just sent that over. And ultimately that's how the bot works. So it, it's a relatively simple concept that you send this chunk of information, this chunk of JSON, as it's termed, Inspector JSON, uh, it's some sort of crime fighting force. So Inspector JSON here is going to send that over and we're going to get the message in here and then we can look at the various bits and bobs of the messages and then we send hello well back. And that's pretty much it. That is how the bot works. Um, we can start delving into some issues or, or complexities around how this is actually working in terms of it being uh, a website and if you're unfamiliar with web development and especially .NET Core development then the main part is this startup class here and this is where all the configuration mechanisms are, are constructed are set up but really the two main points from terms of bot development here is this configuration is loading from a file called maybot.bot, which is this file here. And that's exactly the same file as we selected in the bot emulator. So any information that's in here is also being consumed by the emulator. and will also be consumed when the site goes live. So it's, it's a good place because it's a single place to put your configuration information. If we come back to the startup. The other main important piece is the actual bot that's going to run. So in theory you could create multiple bots and host them here. Um, but here we've got the add may bot. This is the class, so if we look in the definition, this is back to where we were here, this unturned context. So that's how the site knows to use this bot um, to talk to the client, in this case our emulator. That's sort of fundamentally how it all works. Uh, again, if you're new to how these, this structure is put together, you, you 
got a series of comments in here and because it's come from our templated code these comments are being pre-populated by the template so it will have some useful information in and links uh, for example it's got a link here about what bot activity message looks like and it explains here that you can do text speech cards etc uh, so that will help you move on when you want to expand and do something a bit more interesting so just for the sake of argument, so we can see that this thing is actually working and it isn't all the smoke and mirrors. What we can do here, oh dear, look at these horrible spaces. Someone's template's not very nice. Get rid of those for a start. Um, this turn context, so this is a concept that the bot uses throughout and, and it's, it's, and if you're using the version three bot beforehand, this is slightly different similar concept in version 3 but essentially everything's going to come in here on this turn context any message is going to come through um, the turn context itself we take a quick look at that so the activity and again in version 3 you'd be familiar with this but this is really where all this data that we saw here this is all the kind of activity information so we can get hold of that uh, and then there are other stuff that's about how you respond uh, to the message, as we saw before when we sent hello world back. Um, the adapter, again, is a particular bot concept that we'll move into later on. And turn state, which is a, a mechanism that allows you to store temporary information, temporary state, as the message goes through all the various turns. Uh, that is particularly useful when we start talking about uh, in injecting services in front of the turn to allow you to manipulate things like uh, localization or spell checking those sorts of services so we'll come back to the main program the main bot so what we can do then is, is now we know that the message is coming through on the turn context we can see here how the template is using that information to, to manipulate its logic to, so it can do something slightly different. And we can just come in here and say, well, let's look at the turn context. And if I can spell it correctly, turn context dot activity r dot text. So that turn activity dot text again is the text in here, the hello. That's what we're expecting to see. So what we're going to do is going to say, hello world, you said, and it's going to put that back in there. So let's just run that back up. It's going to start this again. Right, okay, let's stop that right now because I don't know about you, but that annoys me. So I'm going to stop that, close the browser down. I'm going to come into the properties of the bot. Uh, and this is where sort of Visual Studio has some benefits over things like, um, well, other tools really, <laughs> basically any other tool. Uh, so we're going to come in here and I can never try and remember where these things are. So build. Okay, we're yeah, actually going to be debug. So when it's doing the debug, it's going to run this URL. I don't want it to do that. Here we are, launch browser. So I don't want you to launch the browser. I'm convinced you're working. I don't need to see that you're working. So I'm going to run this again. And now we're not going to get any obvious feedback that it's running apart from the fact that our controls have now got a pause and a stop button. So in theory, I hope, we can come back to the emulator and say hello again. That's good. So the message has come back through. It's been processed. And now we're going to use our new message. Hello world, you said hello again. So already with <laughs> one very simple step, we can see how the logic in the bot is manipulating the message on the way back, depending on what's been sent in. So you can probably easily imagine that as conversations move on, as a bot starts talking to you, giving you different options, you can respond in different ways. Um, move into how we can do that and what kind of UIs you can create with the bot uh, in the later lessons. Um, so that is fundamentally 
what a bot is. Um, what we're going to do in the next session is to make it seem a little bit more intelligent. So that's what we'll be doing in the next lesson, and I hope you can join me then. Thank you.